Yeah. So it's funny, the entire time I've been in Venice, it's like, you know, people everywhere, tourists everywhere, it's crazy. I'm in the Jewish ghetto right now in the main piazza, and this is the first time I felt like I'm in a city where people actually live. The entire time being in Venice, I mean, there's kids everywhere. It just feels really local right now, it's cool. You should check it out. Hey guys, Sean from the tour guide. Today I'm in the Jewish ghetto, which is part of the Can Reggio district of Venice. And today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know before coming to Venice, if you're planning on visiting the most local area, the most local neighborhood of the island. For reasons I can't understand, many visitors don't take the time to visit the most local neighborhood of Canareggio. Luckily for you, this makes it one of the most attractive spots for a Venetian experience that stands apart from the rest. In this video, we'll go over how to get there, my suggestions for some of the best hidden gem restaurants and Bacardi in Venice, the history of Canareggio, the incredible artwork, and the highlights of this Venetian neighborhood. Let's take a look at this map of Venice. The Sestiere or district is named after the Canareggio Canal, running through the western part of the neighborhood. Canareggio is the second largest and most populated of the Venetian Sestiere. It can be reached from central Venice by foot over the Ponte dei Scalzi. Canareggio is home to the Venetian's main train station, Santa Lucia. If you're coming from the train station, I recommend walking, and it will take about 10 minutes from the train station. You can walk straight through, set your GPS to Ponte Gullier in Southern Canareggio and you'll be well on your way. Just north of Campo di Ghetto Nuovo, you can find the bustling Fundamenta della Misericordia. It's brimming with shops, cafes and baccaros along the Rio della Misericordia. People often come here after work to enjoy like a glass of wine called an Umbra, or even smaller glasses of wine called an Umbrette. It's time to get going again, I think. About that time for another Umbra. Cool story is an Umbra actually means shadow. And the original reason for that word is that the fishermen in Venice used to go fishing around St. Mark's Square. So this is the tower in which all the fishermen when they came back from fishing for the day would go and have their wine underneath here to get away from the, the sun and the heat and things like that. They, they literally sit underneath this tower in the shaded area and have an ombra, which literally means a shadow, which is a glass of wine in Venetian. It's kind of their part of the local culture. A little interesting fun fact there. Interessante, interessante. On a good day, you'll find plenty of people just like sitting in park gondolas, chilling, eating chiquetti, and talking with their friends, and obviously drinking an ombra. When you go to a city, you're really like, everyone inside is looking for like that, like really local vibe. And I honestly don't think it gets more local than eating and drinking and hanging out on the canal, on a boat, with all Venetians. So I think we found it. There are a lot of great places to eat and drink along the Fundamenta. We could literally make a whole video for each one, and we kinda are, which is cool. But here are a few of my suggestions. If you're looking to drink your way through Italian culture, Bino Vero is definitely a place to check out. I had an interview with the owner, and he's just a really cool guy. Bino Vero. True wine or real wine? True wine. We work with little producers that produce, some of, some of them produce 3,000 bottles of very artisanal wines. We love natural wines, so we just propose natural wines. So we have a little, little bit radical. So for example, here you cannot find spritz. Simple. Yeah, it's not like that. It's a simple place, cool place, awesome view. It's nice, good prices. It's awesome. Thank Cheers, you. man. Thank you. The place has a huge selection of wine ranging from all over Italy. The regional wines are really the ones to check out. I mean, this guy hand picks his wines and he always looks for some sort of wine that you probably just couldn't find anywhere else. You're gonna wanna get there early though. The selection tends to dwindle over the course of the day. I mean, he opens like really good bottles of wine and serves them by the glass, which is really cool. Another great spot along La Fundamenta is Altimon. They have a wide variety of cicchetti here, and cicchetti are like delicious little snacks you eat on like tapas or appetizers. All of it's the highest quality food. And the best about cicchetti is there's no need to be fancy, just pick it up and eat it. Just down the Rio Terra Facetti, you'll find the tucked away Cantina Azienda Agricola. This is another Venetian hidden gem, awesome spot. 
It's in a small corner on a little residential street. If you don't miss a small sign marking the place, you're in for really, really authentic food. This ranges from prawns with cocktail sauce to truffle mortadella and peachy carretera. Amazing home cooked pasta. You can wash all that down, obviously, with a classic Venetian spritz, which is Prosecco, something that is, is most popularly created in the Venetian region of Veneto, uh, along with just a little bit of Aperol. They call it an Aperol spritz. Uh, this place, and don't quote me here, makes one of the best in the city. If you want to get really authentic taste of Venice, may I recommend our authentic Venice evening food tour. We'll bring you like through so many of these amazing spots in Venice, and it includes a guided tour through Canareggio and sampling delicious cicchetti and vino across town. At the end of the tour, you'll sit down for an authentic Venetian dinner with plenty of wine to go around. If you're not stuffed, there's also gelato. It's definitely one of the coolest ways to learn more about the city, and we honestly run through like almost every place we're mentioning here. There's a lot to see and do in Canareggio. I'd really recommend the area if you're looking for like the Venetian experience your friends won't be able to find on their own. When you come here, there's a feeling that this is part of the past of Venice. It is occupied by the same families who've lived out here for centuries. I often stop and chat with these people and they're just like pretty cool people, different and preserved in time. This neighborhood holds plenty of things that we didn't even get the chance to cover in this video. If you're interested in seeing this place as it should be seen, I cannot suggest enough our Hidden Venice Tour. It's an awesome tour. It's not only unique and authentic, it's a way to see Venice like no tours can. Let's take things back to the 10th and 11th century. The Canareggio we know today began with the draining of the canals. Dry land being pretty universally popular, people began settling there in the 11th century. They followed a pilgrimage to visit the body of St. Mark. His body was supposedly moved to Venice in the 9th century. The name Canareggio comes from the Italian word cana. This refers to the sugarcane, or canna, that used to be harvested in this area. While Canareggio began with devout Christians, all that changed in 1492. Thousands of Jewish people were forced out of Spain during the Spanish Inquisition. In 1516, Jews living in the city were forced into an enclosed neighborhood in western Canareggio. The origin of the word ghetto derives from the Venetian word ghetto, which means foundry. In fact, the term referred to the foundry district of Venice where the Jews initially settled. This neighborhood was the first of its kind. It has been unfortunately replicated throughout history as a tool of oppression and segregation. The walls of the ghetto only came down in the 18th century. In fact, there was a large diversity of culture within the ghetto itself. The area was districted by the Germans, Italian, Spanish, and French ethnicities. Each had their own synagogue, and each synagogue bears the mark of the people it was built to serve. So we've been filming all day, I'm tired. I left at like 5 a.m. from Rome, took a train up here. It's hot, there's people everywhere. I need like one minute to have a coffee. Not even, I'll fast forward it so it's like five seconds for you guys. But while I'm doing that, if you don't mind, if you like this video, just like this video. If you love it, subscribe so you get all of our content as soon as it comes out. Otherwise, one of the best ways to appreciate the artistic history of Canareggio is through its incredible, diverse architecture. This ranges from the austere Renaissance style of the Santa Maria dei Miracoli to the Gothic church of Madonna dell'Orto. There's also the Baroque church of Santa Maria Assunta. Perhaps one of the most emblematic artistic figures of Canareggio is that of Jacopo Robosti, also known as Tintoretto or Il Furioso, he just painted fast and bold. Check out his take on The Last Supper compared to the most well-known version by Da Vinci. The artist's body is interred at the Madonna del Otto Church in Northern Canareggio. You can still see his intense and vibrant paintings set behind the nave. Interessante, interessante. So right now we're in Campo di Mori, which is a, uh, a, a like a square piazza named after the Moors. Okay, we're just dark-skinned people, and they came to Venice and they lived here. And these three brothers, which you can kind of see one of them, maybe the other two in the distance too, they're on the wall. 
they were bankers, okay? And they apparently had thousands of bathtubs full, full of gold coins. I don't even have one bathtub full of gold coins. They had thousands. So they met this Venetian woman and they defrauded her of all of her money. She was really rich and she became poor. You know, she was so mad. So she prayed to, to you know, Santa Maria Maddalena, like St. Mary Magdalene. And, you know, I guess her prayers came true and they turned into statues. And that's where they are today. So they're stuck in the wall. They're statues to scare away anyone that wants to defraud anyone from banking. You know, like the whole Dante's Inferno and making money off interest. Very bad thing. So they're here now. You know, you can see them in the wall. And Ryoba, which is the one here on the corner, uh, apparently his nose came off at some point and they attached an iron nose on him instead. And now, you know, the iron nose, uh, you know, different things happen in folklore over time. So now if you rub his nose, it's apparently good luck. And the walls actually used to stick like pieces of paper for protests, so people want to protest things. But right now I'm going to go rub his nose, see what happens. Okay. Uh. <laughs> there are a number of Gothic style buildings facing out into the Grand Canal. Take it from me, the Palazzo Santa Sofia is the coolest. It is also known as the Cadioro, House of Gold. Today, Canareggio is the second most populated sestiere in Venice. And one of the things you'll notice when you visit is how much it feels like a local neighborhood. When it's warm, you'll see people milling about the old streets. They chat with each other in rapid Italian. They watch their kids play on the cobblestones. You don't see many people rushing around like in other parts of Venice. The old shops in the neighborhood serve the same Venetian products they have for, for centuries. The tall buildings give the place a tucked away feel, but that doesn't mean it's not modern. When I was there last, I actually threw an American football around with a young Italian boy in the main piazza in Canareggio, which was so cool. So not only are they this old preserved culture, but they're adopting new cool things from other countries. And like I said, you're not gonna see too many tourists here. It's the perfect place to feel like you're part of the Italian experience and not just visiting it. This is what you want. You know, you're in St. Mark's Square and there's just people everywhere. It's crowded, no one really cares. It's kinda just going around trying to take the, the best selfie they can. Here in Canareggio, it's like, what they say in Italian, poco gente, you know what I mean? It's like almost no one around. It's just so chill and nice. In the old ghetto, the Jewish population never returned to pre-World War II levels. In fact, there are only about 450 Jewish people left in Canareggio. They form a critical part of the Sestieri culture. However, on Saturdays, you can find the Jewish people in Campo di Ghetto Nuovo. They will be setting up tables and sharing food with passerbyers. When you come here, you're treated like a neighbor. It doesn't matter whether you're a longtime Venetian or just visiting. You can tour the five synagogues through tours organized by the Jewish Museum of Venice, which is super cool. At each, you can see diverse melding of the cultural influences. These range from German to Italian to Spanish, even French styles. Tours run all week except Saturdays. They end early on Friday for obvious reasons. Do note that you may also be asked to put away your cell phones, which is always a good thing. Remember, these synagogues still serve the Orthodox community in town. They're active and running, which is amazing. The best route through the Jewish ghetto is along the Cale Ghetto Vecchio. This begins just west of the Ponte delle Guglie Bridge and east of Guglie Vaporetto Stop. This route will take you down the narrow streets of the Jewish ghetto. Looking up, you'll see flower boxes and laundry lines strung up across the colorful buildings. You'll pass by the Venetians on their way to work or talking in a cafe. This is the Venice tucked away from the tourists. Following the streets, you'll eventually hit Campo di Ghetto Nuovo. This is the central town square of the Jewish ghetto. Take a seat on one of the marble benches in this serene place. You may spot locals taking their lunch breaks under the few trees growing out of the cobblestones. Come here, sit down and enjoy your lunch. It's amazing. You can pick up food from one of the many kosher restaurants that surround the square. It's a peaceful spot surrounded on all sides by tall buildings covered in ivy. Really beautiful. A few steps away from Campo, you'll find Museo Braico or the Jewish Museum. This museum covers the complicated history of the Jews in Venice. Tickets are about eight euros full price. It's pretty cool. If you're 26 and under, you can get a two euro discount. Uh, here you can also sign up for the guided tour of Canareggio in the synagogues that I was speaking about earlier. You come here and it's just all locals, which is really cool. And that's the feel you get for this area. Why it's one of my favorite areas, probably my favorite area of Venice, my most, most favorite neighborhood. It's because you get like super local restaurants, super local bars, 
cool people. You can have a conversation without feeling like you're just being, you know, nominated as a tourist. That's why I love it so much. So make sure you check it out when you get here. So that's it. Now you know everything you need to know about Canareggio. If you like this video, click the like button. What are you waiting for? If you love it, subscribe, and then leave comments and questions and all kinds of new ideas for our next great video in Venice. Thank you. I'm Audi. Audi? Yo, what's up, doggy? Okay, let's do this.